all of you in the wonderful and awesome and powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We are so delighted and so elated to have this opportunity to come to you live once again on this special Sunday morning to usher in the presence and the anointing of God. And we just want to welcome all of you uh, that are joining us today. Uh, please uh, feel free to share the video as you come on board. The Spirit of the Lord is moving already in this place and we're expecting a move of God right there in your homes yes. or wherever you are watching us uh, through this Facebook live stream. The presence and the power of God is there to transcend whatever geographical location you are, whatever God is doing here, he is doing right there at your location. And we thank God for this moment, for this time that we have in human history, I believe as a people of God to shift the entire earth as we begin to work with the power of the Holy Spirit and see some tremendous things manifest in the days to come. I see many of you are already joining us. Again, please feel free to share the video as we prepare to go further into our service. Please call someone, text someone, let them know that we are on air and we are going live at this present moment and uh, we want you to help us to let everyone know that the Spirit of God is falling like rain that there is a fresh anointing that is coming into your life to push you and to move you and to propel you into your destinies like never before. I feel so honored and privileged to have this uh, time and opportunity to minister the word of the Lord today. I've got a word for somebody. So as we uh, prepare to go into a time of prayer and praise and worship, that word is going to be delivered in just a few short moments. But I, I believe that the Lord is giving some directives in the message that he's given to me today. You should feel empowered and elated and excited about the things that are getting ready to happen in your life. Amen. God is still in control. He is still on the throne. Nobody can dethrone him. Nobody can replace him. Nobody can vote him out. He is God. And we have gathered in this place to worship him and to glorify him in spirit and in truth. Are you ready to worship God today? Amen. Are you ready to give him some praise and some glory and honor for the things that he has done, for things that he is doing, and for things that he shall do? And I might as well say it because it's already in my spirit. What he's about to do, it's going to be greater than anything that you've ever seen. And that's why we have come into this place to magnify the name of Jesus and to lift up that name because it is the name that is above every name. Hallelujah. We're so grateful that we are saved through that name and stamped in our foreheads through that name, sanctified through that name been brought into the royal family of God through that holy and precious name. And so we bless you all. We thank you all for joining us and we just appreciate you for your support. And I just want to encourage each and every one of you to continue to stay connected to this ministry as we go through this coronavirus experience. I want you to please do all that you can to stay connected to the word, stay connected to God, stay connected to these social media outlets that we are bringing to you so that you can get the word that you need right now. You need a now word for the things that you're dealing with in this contemporary society. Praise God. So we're going to go before the Lord in prayer and then I'm going to turn the service over to this uh, illustrious and anointed praise team and we're going to let them lead us into the presence of the Lord so wherever you are uh, wherever you may be sitting or standing I want you to just fo focus your heart and your mind to go before the Lord now as we begin to pray and ask his blessing upon this very very special ser service that God has preordained before the foundation of the world let us pray Father in the name of Jesus we thank you for this day. We thank you for this moment in human history that you have given to us, God, to be gathered at this particular time to seek your face 
and to worship you and to glorify you and to declare that you are God despite what we face, despite the things that we encounter in this life. You are God over all things and we come to worship you. We come to glorify you. We come to bless you. We come to give you all of the praise that you rightfully deserve. We ask, oh God, that you would move in the midst of your people, that you would sanctify these social media outlets, and that you would release your anointing, that you would release your power, your presence, your authority in the lives of your people. Let your word have free reign and free course. Let the praises and the worship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ take over these airways. Bless every household that is attentive at this particular time. Touch those that will receive this word. Move in a supernatural way, oh God. Somebody needs healing. Somebody needs deliverance. Somebody needs a word of encouragement. Somebody needs hope, oh God. Somebody is facing desperate situations. And we pray today, God, that you will feel the need, oh God, that you will manifest yourself right there in the midst of what they're going through. And that you will get all of the glory. Show the devil who's boss. Get all the glory out of that life, out of that household. Touch everything, oh God, that's been touched by the enemy. Sanctify it by your spirit. Let your blood prevail in this atmosphere today. Send your angels, oh God. Send your word in a supernatural way. We thank you for all that you're going to do. Bless your people all over the world. In all of the nations of the earth, oh God, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified in Jesus' name. And we give you praise. Hallelujah. Right there where you are, can you give the Lord a hand of praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, I feel the anointing already moving in this place. There's a word coming. There's a move of the Spirit there's a breakthrough that is getting ready to hit your house and hit your life. And you've got to get ready for the things that God has planned for your life. We're going to turn the service over to the Living Waters International Praise Team. Open your heart, lift your hands, open your mouth, and give God the glory for who he is. The Living Waters International Praise Team comes to you now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm excited. Because we do, we desire for the glory of the Lord to rise amongst us. Wherever you're at in your home, wherever you may be, let the glory rise amongst you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let the... (laughs) Thank you, Lord. Here we go. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the glory of the lord rise among us let the praises of our king rise among us let it rise let the glory of the lord rise among us let the glory of the lord rise among us let the praises of our king rise among us, let it rise. One more time. Let's say that again. Hey, let the glory of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord. Let the glory of the Lord. Let it rise. Let the glory. Let it rise. Let the praises. Let it rise. 
and the people of God said, oh, hey, oh, there the glory of the Lord rise amongst us for it will break every chain in your life if you allow the glory of the Lord to rise up in your life just sing praises unto the Lord and it shall happen and come to pass in Jesus name
chain, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord is high and he's lifted up. I have my one first lady tell me, you know the Lord sits high and he looks low. Because he is high, he's lifted up. And he deserves all of the glory. Hallelujah. In all of the earth. several moments uh, in our service to see what the Lord is saying to us in and through his word. And so we're going to prepare our hearts to receive 
what the Spirit of God is speaking to us on this great day. I tell you, I am so excited to minister uh, this message to you. My spirit is leaping and jumping on the inside. I just believe that the Lord is, is really planning to do some incredible things in your life and throughout this world. And uh, I know that there are so many uh, negative reports that we're continuing to hear. But as I continue to seek the face of the Lord and as I continue to study his word, I tell you the Lord is saying some things that are quite contrary to a lot of the reports that you may be hearing in a natural sense. But as it relates to the things of God and as it relates to spiritual things, I can assure you that the Lord's plans are going to prevail over any plans of the enemy. And so we need to be excited. We need to be uh, standing in a spirit of great expectation because the Lord is going to do some marvelous things. If, uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Joel chapter 2 or the book of Joel, however you choose to pronounce it. But the book of Joel chapter number 2 uh, is the passage of scripture that we're going to be using uh, this morning. I have the microphone in my hand. I usually just uh, talk freely, or at least I've been doing that for the last several weeks. Uh, but today I've got the mic in my hand. That might suggest that I might go into a little preaching today. I don't know. But anyway, in the book of Joel, chapter number two, uh, there's a familiar passage of scripture that I want us to consider today, where, or at least it's, it's familiar to some of us. But in the book of Joel chapter 2, I want to begin at verse 21, and then we'll conclude at verse uh, 27. I may even dabble a little bit in verse 28 and uh, verse 29 as well. We'll see. But in the book of Joel chapter 2, beginning at verse 21, is where we want to uh, land our faith as it relates to what God is speaking to us on this special day. Before I get into the message, I do want to encourage all of you uh, to please join us this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m. for our weekly Bible study. Now listen, we've been having some very powerful Bible studies the past couple of weeks because we kind of switched up the format a little bit. And what we've been doing is we've been giving you, the listener, an opportunity to uh, share your questions uh, if you have questions about faith or prayer or any of the messages that I have been sharing with you over the last month or so, uh, we have been able to interact with you right there through Facebook Live. We've been able to respond to your questions, and many of you are very excited about this, and so we're going to continue in that same format this coming Wednesday. So if you've been having some things on your heart uh, or some questions in your mind that you haven't really uh, gotten a clear perspective on or a clear answer to, then uh, please join us this coming Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, fellowshipping with you over the uh, social media outlet that the Spirit of God has given to us. But again, in the book of Joel chapter 2, uh, verse 21 through verse 27, if you have it, Let's focus our attention there uh, for the next few moments. The Spirit of the Lord uh, says to us out of Joel chapter 2 beginning at verse 21, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, you beast of the field, for the pastors of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I, look at that at verse 25, and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, 
the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent out among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed shall never be ashamed and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. He says it again and my people shall never be ashamed. My brothers and sisters, I want to talk to you today from the simple subject, a new normal, a new normal. Um, uh, uh, if I were going to use a subtopic, I would use the subject, a new thing. It's a new thing. And as you put these two together, uh, you can see clearly that the Spirit of God is speaking to us about doing uh, some things that we have never experienced before. But I want to uh, do my best to extrapolate from this particular passage of Scripture some of the things that I believe that the Spirit of God has impressed upon my heart to share with all of you today. Now, I use the subject a new normal because I think it would be very disrespectful of us to allow ourselves to fall back into an old routine when we come out of this coronavirus experience. I think it would be disrespectful to God for us to not learn something from what we are going through. I think it would just be kind of like a slap in his face if we do not grow from this experience, if we do not evolve and transform and become absolutely what he had in mind for us before he even allowed us to come into this world. If you have the mindset that you are going to go back to your old life, I am here to tell you, you are going to be sadly frustrated. You are going to be sadly frustrated because God is shifting everything. God is changing everything, not only in your life, but he is changing everything all over the globe. Everything all over the world is going through a transition. And that is important for you and I to understand at this particular time. God is not trying to take you back to something that you're used to. He is not trying to take you back into an old mindset, into an old way of living, into an old way of thinking. God by his spirit is trying to move the body of Christ and you as an, under, as an individual believer into new idioms of thought. He is trying to transition your life and bring you into greater realms of glory, into greater anointings, into greater manifestations of his power and his authority and his dominion. But in order for us as a people, in order for us to begin to move into that realm where God is calling us, you have to understand that the things that, that you have experienced in your past are over. God is not going to even allow some of us to even, even entertain the past. He is not even going to allow you to peruse through your mind as it pertains to the things that you have experienced previously because God has broken the mold. God is shifting everything around you and he's changing everything in you because he is strategically creating new normals for all of us. And many people are going to be deeply frustrated and perhaps even angry when they try to go back to old lifestyles and old behaviors and old ways of thinking when this thing begins to pass. And the thing that you must realize as the Spirit of God is speaking to us today is that it is important for you to continue to move with the Spirit of God. Continue to walk with him. Continue to move forward in your life. And the things that you have to leave behind, you just have to leave it behind because God is calling us to greater experiences. God is calling us to something that our eyes have not seen, our ears have not heard, things that have never even entered our hearts. 
but they are going to be revealed and expressed to us by his spirit. And that's why there are so many things that are happening around us. That's why so many things are being turned upside down because God is calling in a new normal. God is calling in uh, a new life for all of us. And the things that we have used previously to feel comfortable by or to feel comfortable with, God is detaching those things from us so that we can move into a place where we've never been. The Bible is teaching us this even as we begin to consider the book of Joel chapter 2. The people of God have been through many experiences. They have been through the flood. They have been through the, 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 the rain. They have been through the storms of life. And yet God brings them to a juncture in their walk with him where he gets ready to shift everything around them. I need somebody in this place and, and those of you who are watching me, I need you to understand that God is getting ready to do some things in your life that are simply going to blow your mind. Oh God, you've got to hear me. God is going to do some things in your life that are going to cause you to lift your hands and cause you to go into a dance. There are going to be so many things that God is going to do in the life of the believer and especially those that can receive this word. There are going to be so many things that God is going to change and shift in your life for the good that if you receive this word, you're going to be glad that you were sitting or standing right where you are right now. As we look at the book of Joel chapter 2, God is bringing the children of Israel through a transition. He is moving them from one place to another place, from one set of experiences to another uh, entirely new set of experiences. And that's what he is getting ready to do in your life. See, you've already had some experiences. You've already had some trials, some tests, some struggle, but God is getting ready to break the pattern. God is getting ready to shift you out of that place and bring you into a blessed place, into a place of harvest, into a place of increase, into a place of supernatural provision. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a shift that is happening in this world. I remember uh, when we were getting ready to come into the year 2017 and around October or so in the year 2016, I started praying and I started asking God, what are you saying to your people for the year 2017? And I believe that that was the time when God first started talking to me about a shift don't worry, I'm going to get to the text in just a moment. But the Lord started talking to me about a shift. And I came before the church on New Year's Eve night in the, in the year or the start of 2017. And I said, church, God is calling this year the year, the year of the shift. That we are shifting. And then we came to the year 2018 and the Lord said, I'm still shifting. And then I told the church in 2018, we're still shifting. God is still moving us. And then even in 2019, at the watch night service, before we entered 2020, I came into this house and I said to the church, I said, the Lord said, we're still shifting, but he's getting ready to do a new thing. Oh yes, he's, he's getting ready to do a new thing. I remember saying in that service that everything is about to change. Everything is about to shift. It was a prophetic word. And blessed be to God, the Lord brought that to my remembrance over these past few days. And he told me to come here today to remind you that a shift is happening. That it's ordained by God. That systems are changing. Governments are changing. Politics are, is changing. Education is changing. Everything that we have known in the past is going through a change. It is going through a change. The Lord said everything is going to change. Not only that, he said everything around the world is going to change. And here we are. Here we are facing this coronavirus. Here we are, there's a global shutdown. Here we are, all nations of the earth are being troubled, are being stirred, are being shaken. Every person, every human being is having to deal with this. 
because God is saying, get ready for a new normal because I'm changing things. But I need you to understand that as we go through this shift, God is not trying to kill you. He is not trying to destroy you. He is not trying to take the joy out of your life. He is not trying to bring you to a place of poverty. And some people around the world are already experiencing that. He is not trying to bring you to a place of devastation. What he is trying to do is to bring you into greater glory. He is trying to bring you into a greater understanding of your divine purpose. He is trying to birth the glory of the Lord out of your spirit as you begin to seek his face like never before because there's a change that God has released in the world and the devil can't stop it and presidents can't stop it and the oligarchies can't stop it and people in high places can't stop it because this thing has been designed by our God, by our creator, by Elohim, by Jehovah, by the great I am that I am and the devil can't do anything about it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, as we look at the book of Joel chapter two, God says to the people of God in verse 21 because he gives them some orders and he gives them some, some directives to apply to their lives so that they can move into this new dimension of power and glory and blessing that God was getting ready to send them into. And the first thing he says, and I'm not going to deal with this point too much because we've already been talking about it. He says in verse 21, he says, fear not, O land. But he's talking to the children of Israel. Don't you walk around being afraid. Don't you be frantic. Don't you allow the enemy to cause you to be hysterical because something is about to break loose. Something is about to break loose. And again, I'm not going to take all of my time dealing with this particular issue of being afraid. You've been hearing messages about that. Don't be afraid. Bring your emotions up under control. Stay in the word of God. Meditate on what God is saying to you through his word. And that will stabilize your emotions. Tell your neighbor beside you, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid because God is with us. Don't be afraid because God has a master plan. Don't be afraid because God is concerned about you. Don't be afraid because God has declared the end from the beginning. Don't be afraid because the best is yet to come. Don't be afraid because breakthrough is on the way. Don't be afraid because there's a fresh anointing getting ready to come into your life. Don't be afraid because God is about to make a way out of no way. Don't be afraid because he's getting ready to send rivers in the desert. Don't be afraid because he's about to turn your morning into day. Don't be afraid. My God, I feel the anointing in this place. He says, I don't want you to be afraid, but look there at verse 21. He says, don't be afraid. He says, but be glad and rejoice. Be glad and rejoice. In other words, regardless of what's going on around you, get a praise in your mouth. Get a praise in your heart. Be happy, be glad, even if you have to force yourself to be happy. Stand there and look in the mirror and tell yourself, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm gonna make myself rejoice. I'm gonna make myself be happy. I'm gonna make myself put a smile on my face. Hi, because God is with us. Joel said to the people of God, be glad and rejoice right there where you are you ought to give God a praise right there in the midst of what you're dealing with I know you just lost your job but you ought to let the devil know I'm going to praise him anyhow I know you got some bad news going on around you but you ought to let all of hell know the God that I serve will deliver us the God that I serve will bring us out the God that I serve his eyes are upon us and he will deliver us my God give him a praise right there Give him a praise right there. Rejoice and be glad. Celebrate that you woke up this morning. Celebrate the fact that you're still alive. Celebrate the fact that you have an opportunity to turn some things around. He said, be glad and rejoice. 
Oh God, I feel this thing. Be glad and rejoice. Be, that's a commandment. Be glad and rejoice. I command you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Change the countenance that's on your face. Change your countenance. Lift your head up. Change your attitude. Oh God, you've got to hear me. Change your attitude. I know it seems strange for me to be telling you this in the midst of all this hysteria, in the midst of all this bad news, but we are people of faith. We are people of faith tied to the power of the almighty God, connected to this kingdom that can change and overrule everything and every situation. So the spirit of God says, be glad and rejoice be glad and rejoice I'm going to be happy and I'm going to rejoice I'm going to dance in the devil's face I'm going to lift my hands in the midst of negativity I'm going to prepare my heart for a breakthrough regardless of what I see around me now listen listen he says he says be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. Do you hear that? For the Lord will do great things. Uh, he didn't say I would do great things. For the Lord will do great things. My God, are you listening to me? For the Lord will do great things. I say this all the time and I feel it in my spirit now. God is up to something. God is up to something. You ought to type that up on the screen. God is up to something. He's up to something. I, I can't perceive it all yet. I can't see it all yet. But God is up to something. God, God is doing something behind the scenes. God is doing something that haven't even entered your mind. God is working strategically behind the scenes to bring us out. For the Lord will do great things. My God, I came here today to tell somebody God is going to do great things in your life. Great things. He didn't say he's going to do small things. He said, I'm going to do great things. Great things, massive things, supernatural things are going to come into your life if you can receive what I'm saying to you. My God, I'm not talking to you like a man. I'm talking to you as I am influenced by the power of the Holy Ghost. There's an anointing that is being released right now to help you to understand that God is about to do great things in your life. He's about to do great things in somebody's church. He's about to do great things in your business. He's about to do great things in your finances. He's about, do, about to do great things in your household. He's about to do great things concerning your children. He's about to send generational blessings in your house. You've got to get ready because God is about to pour out blessings that your eyes haven't seen. Somebody give him a praise right now. My God, I told you I felt this preaching thing on me this morning and I've just got to let it rip because the spirit of the Lord sent me here today by his power and by his word and by his anointing to declare unto you great things are coming into your world. Great things are coming. Great things are on the horizon and you ought to lift your hands and receive it by faith right now. Hallelujah. For the Lord will do great things. I don't know about you, but I'm expecting great things to happen. I'm expecting some powerful things to happen. I'm expecting some supernatural things to come into your life and move into your circumstances. The supernatural is on the way. The supernatural is on the way. God said, I will do great things. I will do great things. So take your mind off of small things. Take your mind off of little bitty things. Take your mind off of things that you've already experienced before. God is getting ready to do some things that are massive, some things that are extraordinary in your life. 
And I know it sounds crazy for me to be saying this because of this coronavirus pandemic, but I've been hearing from God. God is not intimidated by this virus. God is not intimidated by anything because he knows he has the power to fix it. He knows he has the power to turn it around. He knows he has the power to upset the plans of the enemy at any time he chooses to. He knows he has the power to put the devil in his place any time he chooses to. And that's why God is saying to the church and to you, he is saying prepare your heart to experience the Holy Spirit to do great things in your life. You need to get dying off of your mind. You're not going to die, you're going to live. You're going to live and declare the works of the Lord. You're not going down, you're going up. Oh God, I need somebody to hear that. You're not going down, you're going up. You're not going to lose your mind, you're getting ready to get a new mind. You're not going to lose your joy, your joy is going to another level. You're not going to lose your praise. God's getting ready to put a new song in your heart and in your belly and in your spirit. You're not going, ah, you're not going out. God's getting ready to turn the light on. I will do great things. Are you hearing me, people of God? I will do great things. You've got to hear that God is speaking this to you right now. I am going to do great things even in the world. Throughout the entire world, God is going to do great things. What does he say now in verse 22? Be not afraid. Now he said that in verse 21 as well and he repeats it again in verse 22. Be not afraid because he wants you to understand that fear is your enemy. And he doesn't want you to just look at this issue casually. He wants you to understand that fear will, will stop you in your tracks. It will immobilize you. It will cause depression to come into your life. It will cause you to stop moving forward in what God has called you to do. So even if you feel afraid, you need to keep moving. Even if you feel agitated, frustrated, don't know what you're going to do. If you feel like you're at your wit's end, you still need to declare that God is able. Do not allow fear to torment you. And then he says, you beast of the field. Then he goes on to say, for the pastors of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Do you see that right there in the word? He says, he says, for the pastors of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Now what you need to understand about this is that the pastors were not producing anything. But in this particular passage of scripture, it says for the pastors of the wilderness do spring because previously the pastors of the field were not springing forth. They were not productive. They were not fruitful. But, but God is sending a word that the pastors are going to be fruitful in the wilderness. Now I need to talk to somebody who's been in a dry place. Can I preach to somebody who's been in a barren place? God said your pastors are going to spring forth right there in your dry place. Right there in the midst of dryness. Right there in the midst of things not working the way that you thought that they would work out. God is getting ready to send a release. He says the pastors of the wilderness do spring, and then he says, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. In other words, what wasn't working before, it's getting ready to work. The things that, not, that were not productive in your life, God is going to breathe over those things in a new way, and they're going to start functioning according to God's design. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. God is going to cause the things that were not working in your life. They are going to start working. They are going to start functioning. They are going to start moving the way that God had ordained for them to work. You've got to hear this. Where you could not get a release, where you could not get a breakthrough, you're about to get a breakthrough. Yeah, I'm going to break it down for you. Where you could not get the loan, 
God's going to send the money. Where you could not get the thing that you were trying to get in years past, God is now going to send this word to bring about deliverance into your circumstances. What was not working, all of a sudden is going to start working. And some of you, you've tried everything to get this situation working and you've, you've prayed all night and some of you have even gone into a fast and the thing still did not turn in the way that you wanted it to turn. But now is the season and now is the time where God is sending breakthrough into your life like you've never had and what you couldn't do before, now you're going to be able to do it. God, who am I preaching to? You couldn't do it weeks ago. You couldn't do it months ago. You couldn't even do it years ago. But now God is sending a power into your spirit. Now God is sending you new ideas. And now you're getting up under the word. And that's why the enemy is nervous. Because he knows you're getting ready to come into your own. He knows that there's a shaking in the heavens. He knows that there's a breaking in the atmosphere that is coming into your life. You're overdue for a breakthrough. What you couldn't do before, God's going to cause that thing to be activated right now. Oh, you ought to give him a praise for that. It's going to be activated right now. Hallelujah. The, the, oh, God, who am I talking to? I feel it in my belly. I feel it in my spirit that I'm talking to somebody. Somebody needs to hear this word today. That God, that God is going to turn the whole thing around. He's going to turn the whole thing around. God is going to give you supernatural favor. God is going to cause them to like you. God is going to cause them to open the door. You tried everything to open that door. You tried everything to work that situation out. And now God is sending favor and deliverance because he's bringing you into a new normal. He says, for the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. They're going to function now. They're going to flourish. The fruit is going to come forth. Your life is going to have more meaning to it now. There's going to be a greater sense of fluidity in your life. There's going to be a flow. You're going to feel alive again. You're going to feel passion again. You're going to feel the anointing over your life again. You're going to feel glory again. You're going to get your confidence back. You're going to move in a way that you've never moved before. You're going to talk like you've never talked. You're going to walk like you've never walked. You're going to think on higher levels. You're going to move where God is calling you. My God, I've got so much to say. Look there at verse 23. He says, be glad then. He says that again. He says, be glad then. In verse 21, remember, he said, be glad and rejoice. He, re he repeats it again in verse 23. He says, be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Well, he just said that in verse 21. Maybe because you changing your mental attitude and changing from a place of being depressed into an attitude of praise is very significant. It must be very important for you to walk into what I'm talking to you about. You've got to make sure that your attitude is proper for where God is calling you. You've got to adjust yourself to what God is saying rather than the current circumstances or the conditions that you are facing because he repeats this, that you are to rejoice and be glad and rejoice. And if you're having a hard time rejoicing, you need to put on some praise music. You need to find you some uplifting music that, that, that causes you to go into a praise and rejoice. You need to put on some Fred Hammond or somebody. I don't know whoever you listen to, but you've got to find you some praise music and change your attitude because I'm telling you the breakthrough is here. The breakthrough is here in Jesus' name. And then he says in verse 23, for he has given you the former rain moderately. He has given you the former rain moderately and the latter rain in the first month and the floors shall be full of wheat. But look there again at verse 23 when he says, for he has given you the former rain moderately 
and let me just share this with you in more contemporary terms. What, what I want you to understand is that God has blessed you in your past. He has blessed you to some degree. But he wants you to understand that when I sent the former rain, I didn't even send you the fullness of the former rain. Because in the King James vernacular, it says that the former rain was given to us moderately. That you didn't even receive the fullness of what he was trying to do in your life in your past. In years past. And you thought you had it all. You thought you were really blessed. But I'm here to tell you that you didn't even scratch the surface of what God is getting ready to do now because you didn't even receive all that he wanted to do in your life in years past. That's why he's trying to take your mind off of what he used to do. That's why he's trying to take your mind away from what used to happen because he is not trying to do encores in your life. He is trying to bring you into the newness of life into new experiences so he gives to you the former rain moderately. That it's, it's, it's not the fullness of what he's done. That God has not done his best in your life. He has not blessed you how he really wants to because he, he says now that he gave to you the former rain moderately but then he is going to cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Now notice now he says, I didn't even bless you in the fullness of my blessing years past. I didn't even give you all of the former blessing. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cause the former rain and the latter rain to manifest itself in your life at this particular time. Are you listening to me? The former, you didn't even get all of that. But God is saying, I'm going to take the former things or the former rain, the former anointing, the former blessing on your life and I'm going to collaborate that with the latter rain and when the former and the latter all comes together, it's going to bring you into a new normal. It's going to bring you into an entirely different life. God is creating new beginnings in your life. God is trying to change your entire life, your entire way of living. Now, this, this word is for people that have faith because you need faith to hear what I'm saying right now. He wants to take the former and the latter and release something totally new into your life. You know this has to be new because you didn't even receive all the former. And now he's going to take all of the former blessing, all of the former things, and connect them with the latter things which you've, which you've never seen as well. And he's going to bring those things together to produce something that you've never seen. What I'm trying to tell you is get ready for a new life. Get ready for a new life. Get ready for a new life. And I'm not just talking about a life of struggle. I'm not talking about a life of, of being underneath. I'm talking about a life of supernatural provision, a life of supernatural protection, a life of supernatural favor. I'm trying to tell you that God is increasing the anointing for your life, but you've got to receive this by faith and by the Spirit of God because the former and the latter rain are getting ready to hit your life. The former and the latter. The two shall be one. The two are coming together. They're getting ready to get married. The former things and the latter rain is getting ready to connect and create a new covenant in your life to produce a blessing that you've never known. Are you listening to me? 
Are you listening to me? That's why some of us that walk by faith and, and some of those that, that have their ear to the voice of God, we see trouble not as something that is devastating or something destructive. We see bad things as an opportunity. We see negative situations as an opportunity. Not an opportunity to die, not an opportunity to curse our destiny, but an opportunity to see that God is up to something and that as we stay the course, we're going to walk into a passion and walk into a power that we've never known. The former and the latter are coming together. And notice now in the King James Version, he says he's going to cause the former rain and the latter rain to manifest in your life. In other words, God's going to make it happen. He's going to cause it to happen. He's going to make it happen. Like this is not going to come through human effort. God's going to make some things happen for you. God's going to make them give you the job. God's going to make them give up the money. God's going to make them give up the property. God's going to make them, you don't hear me, you don't hear me, you don't hear me. I, I felt somebody's faith go down. You've got to hear me right now. God's going to cause, he's going to cause the former and the latter rain to manifest on your, in your life. So whatever the devil's doing, he's got to get out of the way because God is sending this thing without his permission. Oh, if you're sitting next to somebody, tell them in the house, God's going to make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God's going to make it happen. He's going to make it happen. He, he's going to make it happen. He's going to make the blessing come. He's going to make the deliverance come. He's going to make them act right. He's going to make them do what they didn't want to do. He's going to make them give it to you. He's going to make them give it up. He's going to, oh God, you better hear me. God is going to cause the former and the latter rain to come. Good. God, I feel the glory of the Lord hitting this place. The supernatural is coming into your world. The supernatural. The supernatural. Let me hurry on. In verse 25, in verse 25, you got to get this before I close. He says, and I will restore unto you the years. Somebody holler years. The years that the locusts has eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. God said, I'm going to send you the former and the latter rain and I'm going to restore unto you. I'm sending an anointing of restoration. I'm going to make the devil put it back. <laughs> my God. My God, are you listening to me? I'm going to cause what you lost to come back into your life. I'm going to cause the thing that leaked out of your life, the things that slipped out of your hands, I'm going to cause them to be restored unto you. My God, if I'm preaching unto you right now, you ought to type it up on the screen. It's coming back to me. It's coming back to me. It's coming back to me. For years, some of you haven't been happy. For years, some of you lost your joy. You've lost friends. You've lost money. You've lost business opportunities. You've lost connections. You've lost relationships. But God, by his favor and by his power, is sending it back to you. It's coming back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It's coming back. He's going to restore the oil over your life. He's going to restore the peace of mind that you used to have. He's going to give your dignity back. He's going to put confidence back into your heart and back into your spirit. You've been acting like you're not worthy, but God is going to put a confidence inside of you. And now you're going to stand in power and dominion and authority like you've never had before. And now you're going to know it belongs to you. It belongs to you. It's yours. It's yours. My God, I'm prophesying to somebody. Hey, my God, I can see it in the spirit. Things are getting ready to come back to you. They're already on the way. 
they're already on the way. Now, I'm not preaching to you if you haven't lost anything. But if you have lost a lot in your life, then this word is for you. That God is sending restoration. God is sending restoration. And anytime God restores a thing, he always gives you more than what you had before. So not only is he going to restore what you had before, he's going to send the increase. He's going to send the surplus. He's going to send the multiplication of what you had before. And he's bringing you into overflow. My God, y'all don't hear this. He's bringing you into overflow. He's bringing you into more than enough. He's bringing you into having more than what you've ever had before. If you can hear this in the Holy Ghost, he's going to restore it unto you. He's going to restore the joy of your salvation. He's going to restore everything that you lost. He's going to restore relationships. Relationships you should have had. I believe I'm talking to somebody that, that you've come to a stage in your life and in a phase in your life where you feel like time has passed you by. You feel like you're too old now or, you, or, or that situation will never come around again. But God told me to tell you that it's not too late. <laughs> My God, I'm talking to somebody. It's not too late. You're right on time. And God is sending a blessing now that you should have had 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, all of the wrinkles in your face from sleep that you didn't get. God is about to rock you to sleep. God is about to cause you to lay down on your pillow and rest like you've never rested before. He's taking pressure and frustration and anxiety out of your life. My God, who am I preaching to? I'm here to tell you that restoration is coming into your life. God's going to pay you back. God's going to give it back to you. God's going to cause the thing to turn for your favor. God's going to make the thing do what it was called to do. God's going to make the thing manifest in your life that you've always prayed about. The things that you've dreamed about. I need to tell somebody your dreams are coming true. Your vision is coming to pass. The things that have been prophesied over you years ago are getting ready to come on the scene and there's a prophecy that is yet to speak. But that prophecy is coming right now. Give him a praise if you know I'm talking to you. Hallelujah. 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 I feel an anointing of restoration. Somebody holler, it's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. The devil thought he had you, but it's coming back. Hey, he thought you were going to die, but it's coming back. There's a resurrection that's coming into your heart, coming into your spirit, coming into your mind. Years of pain, years of struggle, years of bad news, years of barely getting by. God is concerned about the least of these. Hey, Satabaha. He's concerned about the least of these. The one that's been overlooked. The one that's been overshadowed. The one that's been cast to the side. The one that has been disenfranchised. The one that has been maligned. God is sending restoration. God is sending restoration. I will restore unto you the years. The years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locust has eaten up. You've got years of promises that are getting ready to hit your life. You've got years of breakthrough that's getting ready to come into your life. Can you receive it? Listen at what he says in verse 26, and you shall eat in plenty. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God. You shall eat in plenty. You're coming into a blessed place. I don't know who this is for, but don't you focus all of your mind and your energy and your efforts into all that bad news. Don't you allow the enemy 
to cause you to lose your vision of a greater life because of all the stuff you're hearing around you. The word of the Lord says that you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Hey, I've got to say it. I hear it in the Holy Ghost. He's going to give you houses you didn't build. <laughs> Good God. He's going to give you wells you didn't plant. He's going to give you vineyards you didn't grow. God is going to cause it to come back into your life. Things that you only dreamed of. Things that you've only prayed about and hoped for and prayed over day and night. God is about to send a release He's going to send a release. Am I preaching all right? The glory of the Lord is coming. The glory of the Lord is coming. The glory of the Lord is coming. The hand of the Lord is coming over your house. He's coming over your house. He's coming over your house. Because the blood is over your house. The blood has been shed. You're coming out of Egypt. You're coming through the Red Sea. You're breaking out of the wilderness. And you're stepping into your promised land. You're stepping into it. You're stepping into it. Tell somebody, I'm stepping into it. I'm stepping into it, into a place of plenty, into a place of plenty. And I'm not just talking about money either. I'm talking about plenty, plenty, plenty. Now money is a part of it because God's going to bless your money too. For the wealth of the sinner shall be transferred into the hands of the just. You, oh, you've got to get ready. You've got to get ready. You're going to have plenty of power. You're going to have excess of joy. Even, the, ah, God, you can hear bad news and it won't upset you. You can hear the devil trying to torment you and you'll still have a praise in your belly because he's going to give you the overflow. He's going to give you plenty. He's going to give you abundance. An abundance of anointing. He's going to give somebody so much anointing, the devil is going to be afraid to come to your house. He's going to be afraid to walk upon your church. He's going to be afraid to mention your name. You're getting ready to walk in a glory and a power and a dimension of authority. I'm telling you, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming, he says, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God. You see that praise thing? Hallelujah. And you shall praise the name of the Lord your God. I told you you need to go into a praise. I told you you need to start being rejoiceful and be happy in your house. I told you to shut off CNN and Fox News and touch into what God is saying in the kingdom. I told you that the blessing is here I told you that God uses darkness to release light I told you that he'll take a coronavirus and use it for your greatest deliverance I told you he'll take trouble and turn it into triumph I told you that he'll take pain and turn it into purpose. I told you that he'll take death and create a resurrection. I told you that he'll take bad news and flip it around and turn it into good news. You've got to start giving God praise. Don't wait till the battle is over. Give him a shout right now. My God, give him a shout right now. Can I preach how I feel it? Give him a shout right now. I'm going into the promise. I'm going into overflow. Tell your husband, tell your wife, tell your babies. God is setting us free. God is setting us free. God is moving the mountains out of your way. God is saying, hey, I feel this prophetically. God is sending a change in the economy. New paradigms are getting ready to come on the scene. New systems are being released and you're going to walk in plenty. You're going to walk in abundance. I know that the Bible says that, that, that the devil is the little G, the little God of this world. The little God of this world. But let me tell you something, even though he is the God of this world, God is God over the devil. And God will change what he wants to change. And I'm telling you, things are going to change 
for your favor. Things are going to shift in your heart. Things are going to change in how you think and how you process. You're going to come into who you were always meant to be and your entire life is going through a transition because God told me to tell you that you're coming into a new normal. You're coming into a new normal. Many people are going to try to fish for things of the past. They're looking for, for, for situations where they used to be comfortable and God is saying, no, 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 you, you can't go back there. I, I've changed everything. You can't go back to a safe place. You can't go back to, you can't go back to a negative place any longer. You are no longer a slave in the Egyptian camp. You are sons of God. And the whole earth is groaning and travailing for the manifestation of the sons of God. I'm trying to cut this off, but I feel something in the spirit that God is trying to help you to understand that new normals are being created. New normals everywhere, in every country, in every people group, in every system, new normals are coming forth. So that means you have to change how you're looking at things. You have to change how you view what is happening in your life. Let me read verse 27 and I'll bring this thing to a close. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am of the Lord. I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be put to shame. My people shall never be put to shame. You shall know that I am your God. You're going to know that God is your God like you've never known before when he finishes doing what he's getting ready to do in your life. He's bringing you into a new normal. See, you can get so used to struggle and so used to suffering and so used to pain that when God finally delivers you, you don't know how to act. You, you don't even know how to respond because you're so used to being up under attack. You can go through so much hell that, that when God sends the blessing, you're, you're subconsciously waiting for the devil to come up behind you and hit you upside the head because you've had so much struggle, so many battles. But God is bringing somebody who's listening to me into a place of rest. He's bringing you into a place of comfort, but it's a new comfort. He's bringing you into new arenas of life and new experiences that you've never had in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. A new normal, that's your word. A new normal. Don't look for the old. It's a new thing. It's a new thing. You're going through a transformation a transformation. When you go through a transformation, you're totally new. God is not trying to repeat something that's been done. He's doing a new thing in your life and in this world. In Jesus' name, right where you are, right where you're sitting. You might be in the kitchen. You might be in your bedroom. I don't know where you are. You may be sitting in your car. You may be over at the park somewhere. You might be sitting in the, in the, in the line waiting on uh, getting some food from a restaurant. I don't know where you are. You might be in Africa. You might be in London. You might be in South America. You might be in El Salvador. I don't know where you are. But the word of the Lord for you today is God is getting ready to introduce you to a new normal. And your entire life and world is going through a shift. And it's not going to look like anything that you've known in your past. I want you right where you are to lift your hands right where you are. If you're right there in your home, I want you to stand on your feet and lift your hands. There's a power, there's an anointing that is moving in your life to continue to shift your life into new normals, into new experiences. It's moving right now. Father, I pray that this word and this anointing would move into every household that is watching right now. 
and even those that will grab hold of this at some later time, I pray in the name of Jesus that they will receive this word in their spirit. I pray that it not just be an intellectual thing. I pray that it gets into the deep fibers of their spirit, into the depths of their soul. I pray that they will see that this is a prophetic word for their individual lives and for the body of Christ at large. I pray in Jesus' name that this word would not fall to the ground, that it would not serve as some form of entertainment, but that we will live by this word in Jesus' name. Let the transformation continue in the lives of your people all over the globe. And we will give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. There is a shift that is taking place. Now, before I let you go, if you're watching and if you're listening to me right now and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to do so right now, right here on the spot. Tomorrow is not promised to you. You need to decide right now. I'm not trying to pressure you, but all you have is right now. And if you want to receive him, you can do it right now. Open your heart right now. If you trust that Jesus is the son of God and that he died for your sins and that he was raised from the grave to give you eternal life and to give you access to his kingdom, you can receive him right now. Pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my sins. I ask you to forgive me. Let your spirit come and live in my heart that I might live for you all the days of my life. I renounce Satan and his kingdom and I accept now Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I receive him as my king. I receive him in my own heart that I might glorify you by faith in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to write it up on the screen that I prayed that prayer and I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I want you to put that up there on the screen so that we can uh, stay in contact with you to, con to continue to strengthen you and to strengthen your faith in the God of your salvation. We thank you all so very much for your support. Please continue to pray for us. We're going to bring this service to a close, but don't you let this word go dead in your life. Don't you let this word be silenced in your heart. It shall come to pass. I know I heard from heaven today. You're coming into a new normal. Please continue to support us through your tithes and offerings. We've got all of that information up there on the screen. You can download the Venmo app or mail it in the old-fashioned way. Many people are going back to that now because of everything that's happening. But you can sow that seed and expect God to continue to bless you and continue to provide for you. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believeth upon him should not perish but have everlasting life. You receive salvation because God gave to you. Now will you give back to him to support the work of the Lord. And for those of you that are already supporting, as I always say, we thank God for you. We appreciate you for we can do what God has called us to do without you. And we appreciate you. Just expect that new normals, new blessings, fresh anointings are coming into your life. Listen, we love you. We pray for you each and every day. And expect the overflow. Expect the increase. We'll see you Wednesday night with your questions in your hands. Expect the deliverance to come in ways that you didn't even think were going to happen. We bless you. We'll see you next time. In Jesus' name, have a blessed day.